budget microphone space has gotten really interesting in the last couple of years. It used to be that USB mics were either good and really expensive or cheap and, well, kind of cheap sounding. That's certainly no longer the case. If your budget is limited and you need a decent mic that you can use for lots of different things, like that podcast you just started, there are now a number of options at around $50 US. What if you need loads of flexibility though? Like maybe you're using headphones or IEMs for gaming that don't have a mic, and maybe you're on PlayStation. And what if you need USB and XLR connections, because who knows what your setup will look like in 6 to 12 months time. These are the questions that the Fine Fine AM8 microphone is hoping to answer. It's a USB microphone that supports an XLR connection, it works with a number of devices, and at $50 US it won't break the bank. It also sounds pretty good, so in this video I'll cover the pros and cons, provide some sound tests, and give you my overall thoughts. The Fine Fine AM8 is a dynamic cardioid microphone, and while it might be a budget mic, that doesn't mean that it's short on features. It has a gain control, a 3.5mm connection for monitoring, controllable lights, and a mute button. It also supports both USB and XLR connections, although it only comes with a USB cable in the box. Via USB, it's compatible with PC, Mac, and PS5. Using XLR obviously opens up a ton of additional compatibility, although you will need an amp. The lights serve no functional purpose, but if you've got to have RGB lighting on all your equipment, this has a few different color and animation settings. The lights will turn off too if that's not your style. The XLR connection doesn't supply power to the mic. It will record audio via this connection alone, but if you want to keep using the other features, you'll need to keep it connected via the USB cable. Now you can record from both sources simultaneously. So if you're streaming and want to capture the audio for that as well as voice chat on something else like your PS5, this is definitely possible. This is really convenient because normally you'd need two mics or an amp that can output two different audio sources or some kind of horrible cable splitter set up to achieve this. Using it is incredibly straightforward. You simply plug it in and you're good to go and the buttons and dials are intuitive. It comes with a stand and the yoke supports both a 3 8 and 5 8 thread so you can mount it on your boom arm or mic stand if you prefer or if you're using the XLR connection. It does fit on the stand using an XLR cable, you just might find that this limits how much you can position it. The construction of the stand, yoke and casing is metal, so it feels pretty robust. I think this thing could probably take a bit of a beating, which is important, especially when mounted on a boom. It has a built-in filter that attracts cat hair like you wouldn't believe, but it also somewhat eliminates the need for an additional pop filter. It's not flawless and you do get the occasional plosive, so I'd still recommend using a pop filter for voiceover work, but you can get away without one. Now, I only have a couple of minor complaints with the design. The design is a little chunky. I didn't find this an issue when mounted on my boom arm, although finding a spot for it on my desk was a bit challenging at times because it blocks my screen. Obviously, this will come down to your setup and how much crap you have on your desk. The mute button isn't in a great spot either. I've lost count of the number of times I've muted the mic by accident and didn't realize because the light is out of sight. You can turn the mic the other way around so that the button is on top, but then all your dials are out of reach. I think a switch instead of touch controls for muting would have been a better choice, and a mute light, somewhere more visible when talking into the mic, would have been ideal. Sound quality is unquestionably the most important thing here. Yeah, I know, RGB lighting is what makes or breaks a good microphone, but let's talk about audio quality for a second. Well, that's what you've been listening to. I've recorded the entire video with this mic using the XLR connection. The sound quality is undeniably better when using an XLR cable. For comparison, here's what it sounds like using the USB connection, and it definitely has less clarity and it doesn't sound as full. The sound quality is probably above what I expected from a USB mic at this price point. It's not as clear as the Audio-Technica that I've been using for almost 8 years now, but it also costs about a quarter of what I paid for that. Plus, my Audio-Technica doesn't support XLR. Now, I always tidy up my audio in post, so here's what the raw recording without any of the magic I sprinkle on later sounds like via the XLR. I haven't done any noise reduction either just so that you can hear the default amount of ambient noise pickup. And here's what it sounds like via the USB connection, again without any post-processing. Just like before, it doesn't sound as rich and you lose a little bit of detail. Like I said though, for the money it's pretty decent and very workable for voiceover work. I wanted to chuck in a standard headset mic here too for comparison. This is the Nova 7, again without any processing. The Nova 7 has a good mic for a headset. Not the best mind you, but this is the kind of quality you can expect from a $400 headset. I review a lot of headsets on this channel and people always want to know what the microphone quality is like. 
Headset microphones are generally pretty average. Some are better than others and things have been getting better, but as a general rule, the microphones you find on headsets are good for party chat and Zoom meetings, but not much else. Finally, here's what it sounds like via USB at a distance of about 60 centimeters or two feet. I've recorded it this way so that you can get an idea of what it sounds like when your face isn't the recommended two to six inches away. This is the type of quality you might expect in a setup where you can't position the microphone directly in front of you. Say, if you're using it with your PlayStation and you physically can't get any closer because you're sitting on the couch. Overall, the flexibility of having both connection types makes the AM8 a real winner for someone who's looking to start their microphone journey. It's plug and play, easy to use, and won't destroy your wallet. Being able to use it with PlayStation is a boon too. It's a little bulky for operating on a desk, and the audio quality when using it at a distance isn't ideal for setups where you can't position it directly in front of you. Other than that though, it's pretty hard to fault the AM8 at this price point. And if you're looking for a recommendation, you've got mine.